morning. It's Sunday, June 20. Happy Father's Day to all of you dads out there. I hope that you're able to enjoy some time with your dads or with your children today. If not, I hope you still feel blessed by the love that you give as a father or receive as a dad. And especially today, I hope that we have a renewed sense of how our relationship with God, our Heavenly Father, gives us incredible confidence and reassurance. We're thinking about that today. As we continue our series of reflections on the Psalms, the book of Psalms, as I mentioned last week, is one book with 150 Psalms, and yet it's divided up into five smaller books. And for five weeks, we are looking at a Psalm that is uh, taken from each of those five books. And it's intriguing to consider how these five books correspond perhaps to the first five books of the Bible. It's a suggestion that many have made that uh, indicates that the main themes of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy correspond with psalms found in these five books of psalms. It's uh, not something we should make too much out of because uh, it, it's perhaps somewhat of a stretch. If you go looking for themes, you'll, you'll find them. But it's an intriguing framework, and it's uh, one that structures our reflections on these psalms, these Psalms that speak to us of God's majesty. We reflected on that last week, looking at Psalm 8 and how that connects with Genesis, the creation story. And today we're thinking about deliverance, the Exodus, how God powerfully redeems his people, getting them out of trouble. That's what the book of Exodus, of course, is all about. And when we turn to book two in the Psalms, there's one Psalm there that I think really speaks to us about deliverance and how God accomplishes that for us. I'm thinking of Psalm 55. Let's hear those words. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. My thoughts trouble me, and I am distraught. Because of what my enemy is saying, because of the threats of the wicked, for they bring down suffering on me and assail me in their anger. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen on me. Fear and trembling have beset me. Horror has overwhelmed me. I said, oh, that I had the wings of a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. I would flee far away and stay in the desert. I would hurry to my place of shelter far from the tempest and storm. Lord, confuse the wicked. Confound their words, for I see violence and strife in the city. Day and night they prowl about on its walls. Malice and abuse are within it. Destructive forces are at work in the city. Threats and lies never leave its streets. If an enemy were insulting me, I could endure it. If a foe were rising against me, I could hide. But it is you, a man like myself, my companion, my close friend, with whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship at the house of God as we walked about among the worshipers. Let death take my enemies by surprise. Let them go down alive to the realm of the dead, for evil finds lodging among them. As for me, I call to God, and the Lord saves me. Evening and morning and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. He rescues me unharmed from the battle waged against me, even though many oppose me. God who is enthroned from of old, who does not change, he will hear them and humble them because they have no fear of God. My companion attacks his friends. He violates his covenant. His talk is smooth as butter, yet war is in his heart. His words are more soothing than oil, yet they are drawn swords. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. But you, God, will bring down the wicked into the pit of decay. The bloodthirsty and deceitful will not live out half their days. But as for me, I trust in you. Now, it's pretty evident when you listen to these words that David is experiencing a lot of trouble. It's not clear exactly why he's in this terrible situation. Clearly, he's under attack and he needs help. And so he's crying out to God to rescue him. As we look at this psalm together, I'd like to consider the subject of Exodus, deliverance. And I'd like to think about that under three headings. First, we need it. So the focus is on us and our problems, our inability. 
Second, God provides it. Focus here obviously is on God and how he does for us those things that we can't do for ourselves. He delivers. And finally, by way of practical application, I want to think about how the focus is not so much just on us or on God, but on God and us together, a relationship of trust and assurance where we find ultimate protection and purpose. So first, deliverance. We need it. I'm sure as you read or listen to David's words in Psalm 55, that there's a lot there that you can relate to. There's a lot of trouble, a lot of violence, a lot of fear. And in this ongoing pandemic, it's something we can especially relate to. I think there's one thing in particular that David expresses there that we can identify with. It's the strong desire to get away, to escape, to somehow get out of whatever situation we're in and find peace and shelter away from the storm. Listen again to verses six and seven. Oh, that I had the wings of a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. I would flee far away. I would hurry to my place of shelter far from the tempest and storm. David writing poetically, describing how he wishes he had wings like a bird that could just carry him away far from his trouble. David wants what so many people want. He wants to escape. Now, I want to suggest to you that this is not only something that many people feel, it's what many people actually do. And I'm not talking about a literal escape, moving away from one place to another, running away from all of your problems. Some do that, of course. But I'm talking about a different kind of escape. Finding shelter or meaning or deliverance in something other than God. It's also a kind of a way of escape when you think about it recognizing that we all need deliverance. We all have situations in our lives that are difficult and even oppressing, and we want to get out of them. And if we can't leave the places that we occupy, then we try to find escape in other ways. We find shelter in things other than a relationship with God. How do we do this? Well, we often look to things in our lives that will protect us or that will take our focus off of those painful realities that trouble us so much. One of these things, of course, is wealth, money, possessions. They provide us with a certain level of protection, of shelter. It's a status symbol, perhaps, that can take the hard edges off of life. Sometimes relationships can be a means of escape. People sometimes want to avoid dealing with issues in their own life that that needs to be addressed, it's too difficult or problematic, and so they just go from relationship to relationship as a way of escaping the fact that they need to address some of those difficult issues. Addictions, of course, are certainly a way of escape for people. They provide uh, immediate pleasure. Sometimes they also offer a, a diversion that will occupy a lot of time and energy, so we don't have to think about those things that are upsetting us so much. Now, when you think about addiction, many of us think about obvious cases of substance abuse, for instance, but there are lots of other kinds of addiction that don't look nearly as problematic. They can be addictions to uh, things like work, for instance. We talk, in fact, about workaholics sometimes, don't we? People who invest so much of their energy and receive so much uh, sense of their own status or worth from their job and from their career, they think their work will deliver them. So these are all ways of trying to find escape, deliverance. And the problem with all of these things, of course, is that none of these things can provide deliverance, not the kind of deliverance we ultimately need. In fact, more often than not, things like money, relationships, pleasure, work, or possessions actually increase the level of struggle that we have if we put way too much emphasis on them. If we pin all our hopes on these things, they will break us. They'll collapse under the weight of all of our expectations that we put on them. We cannot find ultimate shelter in anything other than in a relationship with God. I'll never forget something that the great preacher George Buttrick once wrote addressing pastors at a conference, I think it was, he said, any pastor can go visit members of his congregation who are in trouble. They've lost a job, they've been diagnosed with a serious illness, for instance. But it takes a very special pastor, he said, who has just heard that 
a member of his congregation has been promoted or that a son or daughter of a member of his church has just been accepted into Harvard University. The skillful pastor, he concludes, knows the spiritual peril that lies in what the world considers success. Those are important words. It's his way of saying that if we put too much emphasis on things other than God in our lives, if we try to find meaning or shelter in things other than in a relationship with God, they will crush us because they can't give us what we need. Only God can. That brings me to point two. Deliverance is not only something we need, it's something God ultimately provides. It's exactly what prompts David to cry out to God in Psalm 55. He knows he can't just fly away from all his trouble. That's not realistic. Only God can deliver him. So there's an important shift that takes place in this psalm that needs to be a pattern in our way of thinking and living as well. It's a shift away from a desire to escape, just to run away from all of our problems. A shift away from that to a focus on God who meets us in all of our problems. So it's not a desire to get out of our trouble so much. It's a desire to recognize the presence of God who comes to us in our trouble. It's basically a way of clarifying what deliverance really means. It's not about our getting away. It's about God coming to us. David asks God to do something for him in the situation that he's in. He wants God to deal with his enemies. He wants God to enter the battle that he's fighting. It makes me think of Anne Lamott's famous description of prayer. She said, all prayer consists basically of three words, help, thanks, and wow. Cries of urgent deliverance that we lift up to God, gratitude for their blessings, and praise, help, thanks, Wow. In the little book on prayer that she wrote called Help, Thanks, Wow, she describes a time in her life when she cried out to God for help. It was when her mother was battling Alzheimer's. It was progressing to the point where she could no longer stay in her home in the assisted living facility where she was living. She needed to be moved to a long-term nursing care home. And it was not an easy time, not for Anne, not for her mom. And at one point, When things were a real struggle, she simply cried out to God in prayer, and her prayer was very brief. Help, enter this mess. Just that. We can all pray that prayer, and we probably have prayed that prayer in our own way. Help, enter this mess. You see the shift? It's not so much, God, get me out of this mess, but God, enter this mess. It's what David prays in Psalm 55. A prayer that recognizes we need deliverance and that only God can provide it. And that that the way God provides this deliverance is by coming into our problems, not by taking us out of it. Now, when you think about this, you realize that this is really what the story of the Bible is all about. God coming to be with us in our mess, in all our trouble. God does this because he knows that we can't get ourselves out of our trouble, so he does it for us by coming to be with us in it. It's a story that culminates in the work of Jesus Christ. His coming into the world to deal with all of our sickness and disease and poverty and struggle and sin, that most profoundly, is the supreme example of how God provides deliverance from all of our trouble. He does this by coming to be with us in it. There are a number of phrases in Psalm 55 that apply directly to what Jesus experienced. These are David's words written centuries before Jesus was born, but they could just as easily be words Jesus spoke, especially near the end of his life. When Judas betrayed him, and when Peter denied him, can't you hear Jesus saying what David writes in Psalm 55? If an enemy were insulting me, I could endure it. If a foe were rising against me, I could hide. But it is you, my companion, my close friend, And while he's dying on the cross, can you not imagine Jesus saying with even more urgency than David expressed in Psalm 55, My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen on me. Horror has overwhelmed me. These words find their ultimate meaning in the experience of Jesus. How he suffered and died so that the deliverance we all need could be accomplished. 
Now, the result of all of this brings me to my final point, how our need for deliverance and God's provision of it creates a relationship of trust and assurance. We don't need to find some way of escape. In fact, we can't. God has dealt with all of our struggles. God is with us in all of the pain and mess. And so we don't need to run away from all of it. We need to recognize and rest in the presence of God who has come to us. It's exactly what David expresses in Psalm 55. In spite of all of the turmoil that he's experiencing, he also expresses incredible words of trust and assurance because he knows that God is with him there. He knows that God comes to him with love and compassion. Cast all your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. Now that's a very important verse because the Lord is a specific reference to the name of God, Yahweh, the covenantal name of God, the God who revealed himself to Moses at the burning bushes, I am who I am, I will be who I will be, I am with you. There's an important shift in verse 16 in this psalm where David says, I call to God, Elohim, the Hebrew word for God, the majestic, powerful God. I call to Elohim and the Lord, Yahweh, saves me. So you can see how there is this incredible relationship, not just with some impersonal God, but with a very personal, loving, and caring Lord. And David, when he experiences the blessing and peace of knowing that he's in a relationship with God, knows that his problems don't immediately disappear, but he knows that God is with him in those problems. He can cast all his burdens, all of his cares and anxiety on God. God will take it because he loves us and sustains us. Peter, in the New Testament, quotes this verse in 1 Peter 5, verse 7. He quotes it because he himself, as every child of God experiences, he experienced a relationship with God in Jesus Christ and experienced the ultimate deliverance that Jesus provided. It makes me think again of the word Exodus. When Jesus appeared on the mountain of transfiguration with Moses and Elijah, Peter was there and he heard Moses and Elijah talking to Jesus. What about in Luke chapter nine, verse 31, about his exodus, the Lord's departure, literally his exodus, his going out, his death. And when Peter writes his second epistle near the end of his life, he refers to his own departure. This is in 2 Peter 1, verse 15, literally his own exodus. There it is, that word again. His exodus. He could speak confidently about his dying, putting aside the tent of his body, as he put it, because he knew that even there, and especially there, he would experience the presence of Jesus Christ. The Lord's exodus, his profound suffering and death, impacted his own dying, his exodus, so he could face even that trouble with assurance and confident hope because he knew that he would meet Jesus who has defeated the powers of death in his own dying. This is what makes the application of all of these things that we're reflecting on so important, so significant for us. We can enjoy that same kind of relation, <clears throat> relationship with Jesus Christ because he has come even to us to be with us in our struggle and our mess. We can cast all our cares on him because he cares for us. He's with us. And I hope you know the power and peace of knowing that. I hope you know that the final words of Psalm 55 can be your words too. But as for me, in spite of all the struggle, but as for me, I trust in you. Deliverance, we need it, God provides it, and a relationship with God enables us to enjoy the strength and peace of it now and forever. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you're well, and I look forward to sharing more videos with you on the Psalms in the near future. Be well.